Sure. Thank you uh, for having me talk here. Um, the title of this presentation is CAS, uh, Yocto Made Easy. I'm John Mason. I work for ARM uh, on MetaARM with Ross Burton and uh, a few other things. Um, I'm also a member of the Open Embedded Board and TSC. And I would like to remind everyone that on Friday, there is a OEDVM. Um, please ask any one of the board members, me, Tim, Crofton, Dennis, um, we're happy to help you if you don't know about it, point you to the right resources, all that stuff. So shameless plug in the beginning. Um, I don't wanna oversell myself as a CAS developer or anything like that. Um, just a user, heavy, heavily, heavy user um, in Meta, uh, Meta Arm and a few other places. So um, so please take everything I'm saying as a user and not you know, a super expert. So normally, well, that wouldn't say normally, too frequently when you talk to someone about Yocto, um, the first thing out of their mouth is it's too hard, it's too complicated. Um, and, and many people just don't even want to start. We've had a lot of internal resistance um, trying to get um, teams to move over because it's, it's quote unquote too hard. And I'm sure right now, uh, Richard's eyes are just rolling in his head, you know. Um, but th that's the general perception amongst noobs. So what if I told you that you can build an entire image with a, just a single command? Okay, hopefully this video is legible to everyone. Oh, that's way too fast. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, is there a way to, there, let me do it right here. So I'll unpause it here because it was going too fast, but you can see a single command. I'm cheating here by doing S state and, and download, but it's just uh, an FV, FVP base and a test image on that. And Don't want everyone to wait forever, but let's see if I can skip ahead here. There it is. Does exactly what you think it should be doing behind the scenes. And no one's the wiser from a single command. Everyone's life is easy. And no need to wait forever. Let's just skip to the end. And there it is running test image. Super exciting, right? Okay, so how about we actually move up. Let's try this a third time. Okay, it doesn't like me. Okay, sorry about that. So what is CAS? So this is all shamelessly stolen from their, their documentation. It's a tool to provide an easy mechanism to set up bit bake based projects, which is, you know, Yocto slash open embedded. Um, key features is it does a clone and checkout of big bag layers. It creates the default settings. It launches a minimal build environment, uh, reducing the cost, reducing the risk of host contamination and initiating a bit bake build process. If you just think of it as like a nice wrapper script, it's a little bit, actually it's much more than that, but if you have that kind of mindset, that's kind of what it is. So who would want to use this? So I think really um, it's extremely beneficial on the second bullet and testing and CI, but I think it's vastly unknown or underused for giving it to customers and users who have never used Yocto or who either have difficulty using Yocto or don't want to bother because it's quote unquote too difficult or those kind of people. This might be the 
the thing that you can use to push them over the edge to actually using it and then they can learn the things later. And then you also have uh, developers who want to create a separate uh, environment. You know, um, it, there is a cast container available and they can just do everything in a nice container and separate from everything else that they're doing. Um, it might even make sense for some people that are doing completely uh, desperate, like separate um, tasks to have a container um, using CAS where you could have one project, you know, like one client, and then you could have a separate one and fork that. That's um, it's not necessarily unique to CAS, but it is something. So uh, dependencies, um, it really has no real dependency. It, it needs Python 3, which uh, should be on the there by default, I think, to build, um, to even run BitBake, I believe you need Python, which is Python 3. So you just do a, a pip install and install CAS on there on a brand new machine, and boom, you're done. Um, see comments, maybe I'm running too fast. <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, and then building, it's, it's literally um, a single command and because it's um, really like doing bit bake behind the scenes, images and everything populate where you expect them to be. So in your builds, temp, deploy, blah, 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 right? So, so nothing super unique there. Another fun thing, which I think hopefully everyone saw in the, the quick demo was that it takes uh, all the environment variables like DL dir and s state. Um, I believe uh, I looked at it a long time ago. I think it's fairly simple in that it just passes everything. So if you had some unique variables or other stuff, you could pass them through. You don't need it. Doesn't it's not like it's uniquely searching for DL dir and only passing that through. Um, but for the flip side, you can also remove all those and have a quote unquote clean room build environment so that you can. If you don't want to build from S state, if you're worried about your S state being um, corrupt or doing things that you don't want it to do, you can just do a fresh build and not have any of that stuff in there, which again isn't necessarily unique to CAS, but it is a nice thing for noobs. Okay. So as I was showing before, you can just do a simple build of this YAML file. Let's see if this will actually work. Cool, it actually did work. And what you can see here in the file that's being referenced there, FVP base, it's a very minimal file. It has two includes, FVP and base, and specifying the machine, just like you would specify a machine in um, your, your local.com. So what's actually in those files? So it's another nugget here, um, and it even calls it local.conf, right? Um, and in it, you can specify your some environment variables, for example, inheriting FTP boot here, and you can even remove things that are failing like parse logs um, and xorg for things that don't actually run X like FVPs. And then here's the, the fun one, the base one. And this, I don't wanna to get too deep in the weeds here, but, but this actually specifies everything. And as you saw, they kind of stack. So in it, you're specifying your distro, you know, Pocky, you can have Pocky Tiny, you can have Zephyr or any other distro that you wanted in here, depending on what kind of thing you're building. Um, in this one, we're actually forcing all of the um, ref specs to be by default, the branches um, to be Langdale. 
You can also specify a unique SHA if you or if something is breaking, for example. And because we're building from our native thing, we just need to specify the layers, meta arm and all that stuff. But we're also pulling in Pocky so we can reference that as one of the repos. And this is where it gets the smarts of what uh, repos to fetch is you're actually specifying it. Um, and then our, our base um, local.conf which I'll refer to here later. You can even specify your base target. So we're building Sato. Um, you could do minimal if you wanted it to be fast. You can, if you have, you can actually specify multiple things here also. So for example, if you're trying to build um, a, a piece of firmware in addition to a unique target, you can do that. I, I can show you an example of that if people want to see that but it's really just another bullet of things that build and um, in the local conf that header, which I'll refer to here in a second. But you can also chain them. So for example, the, I have the previous system, which by default using normal Yocto parlance is using um, GCC, but with a simple prepend or postpend with this colon, I can have it building with another tool chain. In this example, Clang, which I'm pretty sure this works. Um, and in that, you just specify the repo, any patches, um, because as of last week, Clang is breaking for us. And then, um, you know, whatever you need to add to the local comp. So pretty, pretty minimal. But there is a little bit of a caveat there in that the ordering does matter. Um, so in this example, you can see still building FTP base, still running test image. But now we have Zen. But now we have Zen. And there's a reason for that. So let, let's just show that. Oh, and, and here, I guess it's worth pointing out that the target does change as well. Uh, so here's um here's test image nothing super exciting in this this is essentially all the stuff that you would most likely be adding to your uh, normal test image it, local comp kind of thing um but i do want to point out this so in the local comp header in the ssd we're saying run drop bear But Zen requires uniquely open SSH. So in here, we have to essentially override this and you do this by the handle. So all these have handles and the, the names don't matter, but if you want to override something, the name does matter. So in the previous example, um, drop bear was under SSHD and Zen here is overriding that from the previous file. So therefore this ordering matters because if you flip the order and had Zen and then test image, that would cause the, the Zen test to then fail because it's not using open SSH. And then um, yeah, to what I was pointing out, local comp that header, and there, um, you can also do your BB comps. There's one for that as well. And uh, you override using the same handle. So um, best practices. Um, if you're going to deploy this for a customer, use a ref spec and don't, um, to fix it to a, either a Git tag um, or, or a branch because you don't want your customer using whatever's latest that you haven't tested it blowing up and them thinking that you make garbage software. And there's some other fun cast commands because build isn't uniquely, uniquely it. Um, you can use 
cast check out and it'll set up your environment. Um, so you don't just need to run build and then it fail and then you work off that. You can just use checkout um, for all repos is a fun way to, you know, if you wanted to tag every branch if, or every repo, for example, you know, tagging it, what you're on, that kind of fun stuff. Um, shell, and I can show you some examples in our, our Git conf, our GitLab CI uh, config file of us using Git or um, cache shell, but in that you can run things um, like specific commands that aren't that aren't building. And then there's a menu there. I couldn't actually. I've never used it. I don't actually understand what it's trying to do. It talks about using kconfig fragments. I don't believe it's trying to run menu config like you would from Bitbake. It looks like it's trying to do other stuff, but maybe it's that. So just another meme to make everyone hopefully laugh. But there is a massive, massive problem in that you need someone to actually understand how to configure the config files to write the YAML files. And um, which I don't think is necessarily a problem for, for noobs because they're mostly doing what someone else tells them anyway and they'll learn as they go. But you, but you do need someone that, that knows what the heck that they're doing. So thanks. <laughs>